Morning team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan M.S. Pierce. This is a Ukraine war news update for the 23rd of July, 2023. This is the first of two uh, as I split them on a daily basis now due to one of them being restricted, this one, because of stuff I say or show. Uh, although it is all fairly appropriate, it's just some of the words I use sometimes trigger YouTube. Right, uh, let's go to where we normally start. The Ukrainian general staff figures for the Russian losses for the day before, before all the usual caveats apply. 630 liquidated personnel is about where it's been for the last few days. Slightly higher than the sort of 500s we saw for some time. So there, there is... Uh, Difficulty for the Russians if they are losing this many troops a day. Uh, we'll, we'll come on to that actually. There's talk that most losses are down to uh, distance munitions. 11 tanks and 9 APVs. That's an uptick in tanks. Uh, that's a fairly unsustainable number. If you're losing 11 tanks a day and not replacing those tanks, uh, then that, that's an issue. And I, I don't think Russia can replace that number of tanks per day. Uh, nine APVs is, is also fairly problematic. And then we get on to the, as per usual, massive numbers for artillery systems. Uh, lost 29 uh, artillery systems and four multiple launch rocket systems. Both numbers are big numbers posted for both those kind of subcategories there. Uh, this is at some point going to really bite uh, and it must be biting now. In fact, there is talk that the Russians are struggling in terms of artillery at the moment. Uh, sources both from the Russians and the Ukrainians uh, concerning that. Three anti-aircraft warfare systems. They lost a huge number yesterday. It's been a bad week for air defense systems for Russia. And we know that Ukraine are concentrating on both of these categories, the artillery and anti-aircraft uh, warfare systems. 14 drones. That won't be from last night, but from the night before. 13 vehicles and fuel tanks, and five pieces of special equipment. Again, this is another category that you, we know the Ukrainians are focusing on. In fact, yesterday, Cherovati announced, or well, as actually the day before, announced that uh, electronic warfare systems were their number one priority. Uh, so I think, yeah, together with artillery and anti-aircraft warfare systems, I think they're all their top priority, and that's why you're seeing these numbers posted on a consistent basis. So again, a really, I think, difficult day for the Russians where the degradation is just continuous, relentless. Uh, and that is the strategy that the Ukrainians are using. I did my extra video yesterday talking about that change in strategy and about how their goals require different metric for success. They are being successful at the moment, even, even though they're not taking territory. Of course, that does, as someone pulled me up on saying, well, you know, you're saying it's not a failure now, but it was a failure as in that first week. Yeah, I think those first three or four days of the counteroffensive, they realised, and you can call that a failure, they realised that that wasn't going to be effective, that it wasn't going to be a good use of those troops and those, uh, piece, those pieces of kit. Losing them in the, those quantities in the first five days, they had to change. Now they've changed strategy and they're doing something else, and they'll return to that initial strategy once they've degraded the Russian air defences. So you can say, yep, it failed to begin with, and now it's succeeding, and they'll go back to retry that that uh, previous phase. Right. Just to add to the sort of numbers we've been seeing here, destruction of Russian Strela. Uh, they've lost a number of Strela's air defence system. Um, these are shorter range pieces of kit, uh, but yeah, really important. They get taken out. Uh, that's a, a Australia. Now, this is a T-80 tank being taken out by a smart projectile. And why I'm just showing you this because it's it's not just the type of kit that's being taken out here. Yep, it's a tank, but it's also the munitions being used. So you see a little bit of an explosion up in the top left once it zooms out. Um, as we come out here, it's a bit stuttery, but there's an explosion up here, there, that those two black uh, puffs of smoke there, as as the artillery case splits and two submunitions pop out, and then they are top attack uh, submunitions that then go down and take out. They can actually take out, on a good day, take out two different targets, but they're both... Uh, it appears taking out the single target, and there's no way the the T eighty is going to survive that. So, you know, Ukraine is looking for these asymmetrical advantages. So, yes, it's about counter battery, 
advantage they appear to be having and taking out air defense systems as well but also the types of munitions so they have cluster munitions and they are using these bonus rounds or smart 155 projectiles to take out uh, equipment as well and here we have again in the, in the similar sort of vein we have a uh, piece of equipment being taken out by a laser guided well, 155mm, M712 Copperhead or similar laser-guided artillery shell fired by an AHS Crab. So a Polish-South Korean cooperation of a howitzer there, self-propelled howitzer. Laser-guided munition being fired from there. But the interesting part is that this poster War Live states that the targeting system is from the Stugna P Skiff anti-tank guided missile. So we've seen a lot of ATGM, uh, SCIF ATGM video footage throughout the whole of this war. In fact, it's there's more footage of Stugna P uh, ATGM footage than of Javelin footage being used. These are indigenous pieces of kit. Uh, there's a tripod with the kind of tube on it that fires and then you've got a lead that can go as far as I say I think 50 meters to someone who's guiding the, the laser doing the laser guiding on a monitor uh, and between them they you know fire and guide the uh, munition onto the target well they're using that system and co-opting it as at least as according to this claim and you know pinch of salt and all that but they're using the Stugner system to guide a uh, a self-propelled gun laser projectile onto the target so here it fires off and this is the stugner screen and using that to guide it onto whatever the target is over there not quite sure but it certainly explodes um, so yeah that is again a bit of ingenuity uh, and is that uh, an asymmetrical advantage that the Ukrainians have? So here, consequence of hitting a mine, there's an MRAP, a Mastiff, UK provided Mastiff. Now all the crew survived, so it's done its job, but they've lost the, the piece of kit, or at least it is reparable, right? So they're going to send this off for repair, uh, have a new axle or, or, or whatnot. Um, but this just is another example of how problematic mines and minefields are for the Ukrainian uh, a counteroffensive. Uh, so yeah, l lots of footage of that kind of stuff. Now we have the Russian MOD has re reported that RAA Novosti military correspondent Rost uh, Rostislav Zoravlev died from injuries as a result of a cluster submunition explosion. And as Noel reports it here, it says doubt. In other words, not doubting that he's passed away, it's widely reported that this uh, chap has has perished but not from, well, the argument is it's almost certainly not from cluster munitions. That part is an element of propaganda. So there's been a bit of pushback to this. So some people saying, if you call yourself a journalist, but are close enough to a multiple launch rocket system unit of an invading army to be hit by counter battery fire reacting to that MLRS batteries fire mission, then, you know, tough luck, mate. Uh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. So, the, you know, some people are, are not very uh, forgiving about this. Uh, I'm sure the counter battery radar or drone surveillance could have easily distinguish this guy from a regular Russian soldier. And of course, so the problem is, and there's footage we've seen previously. I wonder if it's on this thread. Uh, no, they're, they're, I, I showed you footage of a Russian journalist loading rockets onto an MLR, uh, MLRS. In other words, you know, not being the objective journalist, but literally helping the military and therefore is completely in, undis, indistinguishable from military. And you've got this Russian journalist dressed up completely as uh, someone in the army. So there's absolutely no chance of this guy being being protect, protected, you know, given standing next to a multiple launch rocket system or, or whatever. The point, the point is that, yeah... Um, there's very little sympathy for him. But actually, it was a group of journalists came under fire and shelling at the front line northeast of Vasilivka, a number of dead and wounded on the southern front. So, yeah, there might be a case that I think is a claim that so the photojournalist was seriously wounded. Um, uh, is Vestia correspondent seriously wounded? 
so there, there's a number of those damage. So they might have been in a car. I don't know. There's competing narratives going on as to exactly what happened there. But nonetheless, journalists have been hit uh, in the war. A lot of uh, Russian journal, a number of Russian journalists there. Now, take this with a pinch of salt. This pinch of salt. This could be psyops or you know propaganda from from the Ukrainians. But this is supposedly a captured Russian soldier and uh, with a Nazi swastika tattoo. So these guys are coming to denazify Ukraine. Uh, is the claim. Now, this is what I was referencing earlier. So Ukrainian officials stated on July the 22nd that Ukraine's interdiction campaign against the Russian military targets in the rear areas is successfully degrading Russian logistics and counter-battery capabilities, likely contributing to an asymmetrical attrition gradient in Ukraine's favour. Chief of the Main Directorate of Missile Troops and Artillery and um, Unmanned Systems of the General Staff, Colonel Baranov, uh, long title, uh, stated on 22nd of July that Ukrainian missile and artillery units are responsible for approximately 90% of Russian losses. 90% of their losses is done from ranged equipment. So again, we go back to the change of strategy and why would you send your troops in to attrit themselves and attrit the, the Russians, but at a ratio that is that is you know, not acceptable because, hey, you're losing just any troops. Why would you do that if you could do this the, broadly the same thing? Now, you can't do exactly the same thing. So there is a, there is a difference here. But if, if one of your jobs is to attrit your opposition, that's why you're going in, then and you can do that really effectively from a distance and not lose any troops, then do that. Do that until you get to a point where you have to use ground troops to move because actually you need to take control of territory. You, but you attrit, 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 move. Attrit, 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 move. So it's that it's a bite and hold approach to, um, to maneuvers there. Right, we're going on to strikes now. Sorry, the colours of the tabs, there's been an update to, to Edge overnight and I don't like all the colours have changed. Anyway, relevant uh the big news is odessa but before we get on to odessa last night let's go back odessa's been hit for three nights in a row now uh, it's all about taking out the grain uh and the ability to export to export anything but but grain and foodstuffs mainly uh then there's been hitting of uh you know, residential areas, cultural areas, it's just been widespread destruction that has incurred the wrath of many. According to UN agency, this attack is a second to date in an area protected under the World Heritage Convention, and this is not including last night's strike, this is from yesterday, in violation of the 1954 Hague Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the event of armed conflict. In other words, war crime, uh, what well, UNESCO are not happy. And then another example of a war crime, during their latest attack on Odessa, this is, again, this was yesterday's, not last night's, Russia opened with a pair of submarine-launched caliber cruise missiles. These set fire to a grain storehouse. Ten minutes later, a third missile was used to deliberately target Ukrainian firefighters and first responders. This is not the first time that has happened. That is a common theme that we've seen to the way that Russia strike. Um, such that it's not just coincidental. It is purposeful. Now, then there was last night, and last night was a terrible night for Odessa. Ukraine's air defence says it intercepted nine of 19 missiles fired at Odessa. Uh, the nine that were intercepted were caliber missiles and this kind of K missiles. The others, these KH-22 and Onyx cruise missiles, these are anti-ship missiles, and they are, they are launched in a way, uh, their, their, their trajectory uh, and their their behaviour is very difficult to shoot down. You need something like uh, Santi or Patriot to shoot them down. Anyway, uh, UNESCO protected downtown of Odessa in Ukraine after an overnight visit of the great Russian culture. Uh, this is what we're seeing. This kind of footage is uh, widely been widely shared today. Is this a military target? No. Is this the Russians hammering civilians? Yes. Is this a war crime? Yes. 
Uh, now, we are going to see lots of footage like this and, and pictures like this. This is uh, Zelensky himself saying, missiles against peaceful cities, against residential buildings, a cathedral. There can be no excuse for Russian evil. As always, this evil will lose and there will definitely be a retaliation to Russian terrorists for Odessa. They will feel this retaliation. All those who suffered from this latest terrorist attack are being provided with assistance. I'm grateful to everyone who is helping and to everyone who is with Odessa in their thoughts and emotions. We will get through this. We will restore peace. And for this, we must defeat Russian evil. Now, I just want to say to those Russian shills and pro-Kremlin voices in my threads, Coach Trevor, uh, Clive Engel, uh, Nikos G., and we've lost a bunch of them because, hey, they were all sacked after Prigozhin's troll factory was closed down in St. Petersburg. So I could name all of those as well. But you are trolls. You are paid up Russian trolls. Solid foe life. There's another one. So those four I've named, I'm going to just say this now. You, you in justifying this, that you always seem to do, you justify, you fight so hard to uh, give us the pro-Russian narrative and the talking points of the Kremlin is disgusting. You are morally abhorrent, as is the narrative you perpetuate. And it's not good enough. It's not good enough to rely on the Russian talking points of, oh, you bombed the Donbass for eight years. No, you didn't. There was a war going on where you invaded, right? Uh, and it was an illegal invasion that now Putin has admitted to. So it, that kind of behavior disgusts me. Uh, I have no time anymore for your nonsense. It is, you are as morally, um, well, not quite. I mean, it's worse to actually pull the trigger and, and destroy these uh, cultural centers and people's livelihoods and lives. Um, but then to, to, to sit there and try and defend it as your job, it's just, it ain't cool. Uh, consequences of Russian missile attack on the Transfiguration Cathedral. Lots of footage of the cathedral inside of this uh, cultural center, etc., etc. It's yeah, it's all it's all terrible. So much footage coming out. Odessa being hit, uh, but of course, we, you know, we've seen this in Kiev. It's, you know, this isn't suddenly new. We just kind of forget, or maybe I'm, I'm, I'm unfairly talking on behalf of others, but I, I forget that actually we've got Butcher, we've got Irpin, we've got countless examples of this kind of behaviour. It's utterly, utterly unacceptable. And stuff like this, yeah, I don't know. Of course, human life, the loss of human life is, is terrible and, and worse than, than just bricks and mortar, right? But there's, there's something that, that hurts when historical, irreplaceable things are destroyed that, that you just can't replace because it is, it is historical artefacts. This is a building. This whole building is a historical artefact. And it is it is now, you know, degraded to a woeful degree. It's just so sad, and yeah, I just, I it's inexcusable. But but everything the Russians do, uh, the Kremlin does, is inexcusable at this point. Um, anyway, sorry for my kind of barely concealed anger. Uh, we will not save Odessa and let's destroy Kiev and Lviv, says uh, Solovyov, the uh, Russian propagandist. So, you know. Um, now, this is a lot of people are saying this. I just want to slightly call this out. I rest my case. Epic fail from the US in not providing aid tackens. The Biden administration must reverse its course. This is about Ukrainians dying. There's a moral argument here. Uh, as uh, responded to someone else saying, yeah, another night of Russian strikes on Odessa with Onyx missiles launched in plain view from Sevastopol. They wouldn't be doing it if Ukraine had ATACMs to fire back at the launch sites. I'm going to call that out because it's not quite correct. I mean, they've got missiles launched from airplanes that can't be hit by ATACMs. They've been launched by submarines that I don't think will be, re you know, ATACMs are the wrong munition for that. And from ships, I don't think ATACMs are the right munition for for ships either. And so what's happening 
what's happened to Odessa, I don't think is solved by eight Atakams. Although you could possibly use eight Atakams to hit Sevastopol as a port, to hit moored ships there, possibly. But Sevastopol is, is surrounded by the best of, of Russian air defences, so I don't think eight Atakams will get through. So I just, like, I understand the anger here, and I understand the frustration at not having eight Atakams. I just, you know, it needs a little bit of, accuracy i think in in those claims but i'll probably be correct to myself with some saying actually you can use eight hackers against a submarine um right ukraine loitering mun munitions hit and destroyed an oil depot and an ammunition depot of russian forces being used by the black sea fleet in in crimea i report on that yesterday there was a lot of strikes uh there have been a lot of strikes in cry in and around crimea over the last sort of two three four that well for weeks really it's consistently targeted by the ukrainians uh, Storm Shadow missiles today are making Crimea a log logistical de desert for big Russian ammo depots like the Gimlers did in Donetsk during the summer of 2022. So HIMARS did to Donetsk what Storm Shadow are doing to Crimea. Map of today's cotton. So cotton is the word for explosions like the clouds of explosions in Crimea. The detonation of an ammunition depot can be heard even 30 to 50 kilometers from the epicenter. Um so th there is, yeah, there is good news for the Ukrainians in taking out military targets across Crimea. I showed you this video of a JDAN taking out a communications building, a comms node. And I was like, yeah, d d that is interesting. Use of JDAMs takes out that building. And, uh, but you wonder, you know, what was there? Was it significant, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera, all that kind of stuff. There's been a translated uh, message coming out there from someone who survived that. Said, "I'm alive. I thank everyone who prayed and is praying for me, and for all Russian soldiers. Thank God it's alive or I'm alive." There weren't many chances at the comm center where I was working at the moment near Bakhmut. The crests worked with an American planning bomb. They, of course, it's a Google Translate from an image, so it'll be a bit weird. Uh, with homing head they did not regret the whole drying of which they do not have so much i don't really understand that i went into the window of our air defense and worked uh, the brick house was folded into dust bricks and fallen ceilings 200 alas more than survived so what that means is 200s which is code for uh dead there were more dead than survivors uh so it doesn't give us too much inform extra information but that that was a successful hit by jdan that jdan and it and it did take out it seems uh, some kind of comms node. Um, moving on to other bits and pieces and off those kind of aerial strike uh, topics. Yet another mysterious death of a top manager in Russia, Anton Cherepnikov, Cherepnikov uh, owner of the Russian IKS holding, died. He was 40 years old. The preliminary, ca preliminary cause of death, according to official sources, was a heart stop. Uh, he uh, Ch Cherepnikov's IKS Holding is the largest company in Russia in the area of informational security and operative investigative systems, more commonly known as wiretapping. His company has been serving Russian law enforcement structures and controlled by them for a long time. It executed a lot of measures connected to Yerovaya law, requiring internet and telephone companies to disclose private communications and data to, of their users. He took part in developing a face ID system in Moscow. In 2023, he and his IKS holding were sanctioned, and he's ended up being, you know, um, on the wrong side of a window. Well, no, uh, heart attack this time. Uh, Crimean Railway is apparently st suspended. I don't know if that's still the case, uh, but there was no railway being used yesterday. This is exactly what Ukraine would want. I don't know if that's a result of the hit on the road. Uh, bridge span uh, from the Crimean Bridge, all, all things that happened further inland with strikes. Uh, and I don't know if that's still the case right now. However, you know, there is talk that that they are using predominantly road to get, or they were using road to get equipment into Crimea, because uh, if you're getting huge amounts of equipment in by rail, then you are unloading that all in one place and that becomes 
particularly susceptible to a Ukrainian strike. So they have had to move stuff in by road. And of course, that's been affected by the strike on the bridge too. Uh, okay, that's uh, all for the first part of this video. Please check out the second part, which will be forthcoming. Take care. Speak soon.